I can't get enough of the stream. So this will be my, um, well, I went through it the second time just on different songs, but this will be my next time going through actually doing a end of stream commentary because now I can look around a little bit more. I can look at Islander's Arms, a lot of the details that they put into this and things that maybe I didn't quite catch before when Saturday night when this went off, that was the night I had my ticket. Um, I was on the Discord and I was toggling back and forth with the Nightwish Army. Um, I have never in my, I mean, I, I think about it and I'm going to cry. I just, you guys have no idea. Yes, you do. Yes, you do have an idea. Um, I have never seen something like this happen before where so many came together in one moment in time and that moment was bright and it was shining and it was due to the muse of song and it's been here since the beginning of time and, and it, it's that moment. We truly, and it's that kind of healing moment in time we need in this world and I think that's what you know I'm one of those people that are a dreamer and I can see these things and so can everyone else I know you did um, but that said I'm gonna try not to uh, get too upset here I'm not upset trust me it's just the beauty of the moment needs to be shown and it just goes to show the power and how everyone forgot about everything in the world in that moment and that is the kind of healing power that, that we need. Um, and if it takes this kind of thing and these kind of efforts, then uh, we need to um, embrace them. Okay, well, I'm going to pull myself together here and get ready to uh, give a few comments on it as we go through. And then we'll pick up um, commentary as I progress through the songs. I just finished Noise again, and I have to admit, the more I listen to this song, the more I like it. Uh, some of Thomas's facial expressions in this song were really wonderful. Four top form vocals, spot on. Um, and Troy, oh my gosh, he's just doing so well. Um, I did go get a box of tissues because I have a tendency to cry. Um, backing up, I never realized um, as I go through how I would ever come to a place where I would have such a connection with a group. Um, never really thought that would happen. And honestly, it's just the poetic connection is so strong and and i know it happens to everybody it's because they do they have such a magic that they they have and the bass player i mean very wonderful and i'm um i know we miss marco we miss his vocals but i did want to say that floor's long note at the end spectacular and we'll just keep going in little uh, segments like this. Like I said, this is the end of stream commentary. Uh, I it, it ends in so many hours for me and just promote this uh, because it is absolutely phenomenal what they have pulled off. Planet Hell. Uh, lava lakes, fires going up Islanders arms. The vocals for Floor, I really loved uh, Save Yourself a Penny for the Ferryman. Wouldn't Anne Wachoff have been so impressed to be able to see this? I thought of her yesterday. Um, how wonderful, how she wanted to see Nightwish again so much. And this was right here in front of you. And it's so much, you know, you see everybody up close. And, and I just love the way they're looking at each other the the expressions thomas just keyboarding there in planet hell where he was just going all over those notes uh dancing around them i just thought of Anne, and i just you know it's too bad that she didn't you know couldn't have seen this but maybe she has in that meadow of heaven for sure i'm gonna move on to the next song and do like i said in just little segments a little bit of a impression as i go through 
and I'm sure a lot of you are share, will share and have shared the same sentiments um, as we go through these. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up and move on to the next song. Don't you think that we all have become the music of an Alpenglow? That is one of my favorite songs. And the first one I noticed was Thomas had a little facial expression of an almost oops or near miss moment, maybe on the keyboard. And I thought it was absolutely precious. Visually speaking, I really enjoyed the spinning cymbals and gears um, and, and the uh, hands of clocks on both the ceiling and the floor. I really enjoyed all their smiles and and Pooh's up close guitar work. Also Troy and Pooh when they were guitaring together. I thought that was really, really nice. I think Thomas singing is wonderful. Um, even though, you know, we can't hear him. I really enjoy also I've noticed in Pooh looking at Juka and 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 the connection that they had going into this. I just thought it was really powerful. We were here Yes, we were here. Elin, I almost forgot to mute it. You almost heard it. Of course, we've all heard the song, right? At the end of the other one, A Winter is Coming, I love the fact that Floor had these little, you know, small things or comments in between. I kind of wish there were more of them, but that's my personal opinion. Um, I thought the chorus on Elin sounded really good. Personally, I do miss Marco's sound and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I really thought Troy stepped up in a very wonderful way, especially toward the end when he put the, um, his, the, the pipe down and just was there present and, and singing um, in the harmony, which was really great. Uh, lyrics are, are beautiful. Um, love Floor's engagement with her facial expressions as well, like calm and, and just neat little things like that. Also at the key change, I thought that was really neat. Now during this song, I had a chance to kind of look around a little bit more toward the background. I realized the tree is changing colors from blue to purple and the books behind and all the details that are actually there and some of the glows of the candlelight underneath certain items, which is just amazing. So anyway, I'm going to move on to the next song. It's just a pleasure to be able to share this end of stream commentary. It's just so much to um, learn from. Love the snow, love the falling snow. And if they put this out on a DVD, I will buy it. Wrap this one up on to the next. It's time for a little story. Next song up, her expressions are really cool. I love the jam in this as far as the intensity of it. I also really love the fact that Impu was singing. Um, but yeah, let's just see. Some of Floor's uh, expressions are just crazy, you know? And of course she does her windmill stuff. Uh, Thomas, he's trying to keep his hat on during this song. Everything about her her these things that she does and, and this and this and this and she's doing this. Anyway, let's move on to the next. So the next song in the lineup is from the new album, How's the Heart? I can remember when I first heard this, uh, doing a reaction to it. As I'm listening to it again, I love the way that they've done this and the sound. Troy's voice coming through on the harmonies are great. What stood out to me during this section, truthfully, was the fact that Troy had his eyes closed the entire time playing that bagpipe thing, and I'm assuming it's a bagpipe, I'm not even sure, but um, it just goes to show just respect for the amount of time that he put into it. Um, I love the part where she talked about um, you know, in the lyrics, let's see, it says, um, this one who came from me, and, and I could see it in Flora's eyes, the love that was there. Earlier on, of course, you know, I like that Celtic vibe that he gave it. I'm, you know, right about right now, I'm noticing they're starting to break a sweat, <laughs> and poo anyway, but he's off visiting other people, and he visited Kai during this. Relevant song. And it's one that means something. How is the heart? You know, do we ever wonder? 
you know, think, and, and these are the things that, that he comes up with, um, and they, they express this. Um, I just find it just amazing, but commentary um, on the final hours of my um, stream. So, closing now at two minutes. So the next song up on my commentary in the virtual concert is um, is uh, Harvest. Now, when I first heard this song, I wasn't real sure what to think of it. It seemed a lot different than what they've done in the past. But the more I'm thinking about it, can you imagine being in a huge uh, auditorium or you know stadium? and everybody pointing up to the air one single grain. The power that that moment will hold will be absolutely amazing. But the organic sound and the drum beats with the vocals, nothing else, just that. I thought that that really brought, like I said, that very organic sound to it. Uh, it's very, much laying a foundation for which to build upon and they do things i noticed um, thomas had a very pleasing smile on his face during one of the sections uh, floor smiled to troy as she actually moved off stage for a brief moment once again uh, troy's eyes completely closed during the time that he's playing that um, pipe and whatever that is. Sorry, I don't know those kind of instruments. The gold um, um, statue with that bird on it, actually the birds like lifted its wings and stretched its wings and, and uh, folded itself back up, which I thought was really, really neat. Juka's jam looked so relaxed and fun as well. So anyway, there's a little bit about Harvest and I'll move on to the next song on commentary. So the next song up was Dark Chest of Wonders. I have not heard that song a lot. I really like the um, when it goes toward the end, when it goes into more of a chorus. What was very notable about this particular performance is uh, the way Impu went to visit Yuka. And, and I love the way that they had that interaction there during this song. He's pretty good at visiting everybody. Um, but that was really notable. Uh, the candles floating everybody realizes that reminds us of the harry potter movies when the candles fell down and floated that one however i'm going to say this um i love the fact that and Pooh finally got his little whammy in and he knew it he was pleased with himself his eyebrows went up and he was looking at somebody that was probably in the camera crew um, looking on and and it's like a, a little pleasure you know thing that yes I did it and I got it in haha -ha. this is a neat thing about this particular format is you can see up close especially when they get these cameras going in you know like in Pooh's, um you know close-up of the guitar or or Kai you know he's over there on the drums with his eyes closed doing everything uh, of course um floor with all of her facial expressions and the pleasure to coming from Tuomas's face you know when he's um enjoying playing these songs um and he's so you know they're masters at what they do so anyway that was that song and we'll go on to the next we're about halfway through already the next song up was I Want My Tears Back. When I first heard it start, I remember getting on the Discord and writing O-M-G and a bunch of lines because I knew starting out on this Nightwish journey, this song literally unraveled me and I was not prepared for the reaction that I would get. Truthfully, it's one of my most viewed videos on YouTube. Um, there was something about the lyrics that, that takes you back in time to a time of innocence and, and the beauty and, and just everything that's with it and the Celtic feel. It literally unraveled me like none other. This was one of those that I was just really waiting for. Love it. And um, I remember doing that. Now, the keyboarding, the pipes, the lead guitar, when they were going through the really fast stuff was so impressive here. 
I missed Marco's voice, but that saying, Troy held it together very well. There's flowers growing. If you all notice this over where uh, Juca stands, there's white flowers that are actually growing out of the ground there. And uh, it's just amazing to see all the different things. You know, I don't know, it's just something about this whole backdrop that they have created and the magic that went into this. Um, but the song itself, Need I Say More, we all know it is one of their, um, one of the songs that really, really took me back and gave me my tears back. It was an anticipating moment and I just absolutely love the song as most people do. And I want my tears back now. And Floor lets us know that she wants them back now at the end. All right, I'm going to move on to the next song now. So the next song on the set list was Ever Dream. I remember that was the second song I had ever heard from Nightwish. What I noticed about Thomas is he became more serious during this song. He was focused and very intentional with the way that he was approaching his keyboard during this song. And I had such a respect for that. The beginning of it with Floor's voice, it was extraordinarily vulnerable. And I feel that that really set the tone for the song. The song itself is one that I truly um, feel there's so much emotion behind it. Also, uh, Floor actually was singing uh, uh, Marco's part, which was a little bit different uh, for us to hear, but done very well, of course. And it was the part where it, it you know, he would say, do it with me. And that was um, kind of at the end of the verse, I guess you'd say, but, um, or the sentence within the verse. So there's really not more. Hi, little man. Come on up. Look who visits today. Hello. What? You gonna look? All right. There you are. What? Do you have a string for my guitar today? Let's find out. Nope. Not today. <laughs> I better put him down. And so there was light. It's getting a little bit late right now, 8 p.m. Still light outside, but a little bit dimmer. I turned on the other light to illuminate things. Well, speaking of Sleeping Sun, that was the next in the lineup. And the one thing that I noticed, and I remember commenting in the Discord was, oh my gosh, look at the pink moon. And, you know, it was really neat through the, um, the, the glass uh, windows of this Islander's arm, but um, it had like the aurora um, in the gradient colors, you know, of the, the yellow, green, um, blue, purple, kind of that color. So pretty. There was a gorgeous guitar solo by Impu. What I noticed, though, Two things, a lot of eyes were closed during this. Tuomas' eyes were closed. It was a more laid back song, just a lot of beauty. And, um, but I have to say on Juca, his bass playing was extraordinarily prominent to me in this song. I really wish that I had this a lot longer than just the 48 hours um, because I would love to revisit this. Um, a lot actually when you want to really escape and come into something that is so engaging with lyric and knowing also how it touched so many people what they say 108 countries probably more because you know we're talking one ticket per device I might say I'm sure that's maybe what it was and there's more people that may have been watching, of course. So anyway, let's uh, move on to the next. And, uh, and we are really getting closer to about that much more to go on this great big stream here. And then it will run out. What time does this tavern close? Never.
in the background through the uh, glass, you can actually see a lot of the black and white um, parts of the music video that we saw when they first brought this out. Also, the floor was pink with uh, filling in some of the lines and all the designs going on there. So the song itself, and we all know this, it's very heavy. It's a heavier song. It's heavy in lyrics. It's heavy in, um, in the uh, intelligent writing that went into this. I noticed that this song, honestly, has probably, you know, just thinking of the recent stuff, um, really diverse melody and the way that they he put this together. It's just really diverse in that way. I noticed that Juka was really enjoying this song a lot. Notably at the end, it looked like a lot of them were out of breath at that point. Like they had really pushed themselves incredibly uh, vocally and everything that they put into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next song. And we're getting closer to the end here, but that was Pan. The next song was Last Ride of the Day. I found this one to be extraordinarily all-encompassing. It brought together an intensity, um, also the very subtlety also of the way Floor would, you know, have the spark and, and just some of the hand gestures really, really brought this one about. Um, the spinning skies in the background that you could see through the windows of Islander's Arms. Spinning feeling. And, and I remember on the Discord that night, a lot of people were putting on things that were going around and around and around, kind of like, a, you know, the being on a ride and like the roller coaster. I remember I contributed a... Um, a really out of control merry-go-round and then the ceiling when it panned up there was an end there for Nightwish of course and the Aurora Borealis in the background and Pooh's solo was absolutely amazing and this was a real high intensity song okay well I'm gonna move on to the next one Ghost Love Score, the very first song I ever heard by Nightwish. First came out, there were head nods, you know, like, hello, here she is, welcome to the stage. But I knew that night of the Discord was just about ready to explode, especially during, during the, um, the part ramping up to the belting note, which, in my opinion, was one of her most clear and um, outstanding belting that I have heard from her during this song. It was incredible. Um, Thomas is back there head banging, you know, with his eyes closed. They were in their moment and Pooh smiling like all get out because she had just killed that note, especially at the end when they were, you know, um, and Pooh was saying, come on, come on, come on, come on, let's go a little bit longer, you know, kind of uh, dragging out that last note. Kai throws a stick in the air, comes down and catches it, and they're done. I'm going to go ahead and move on. This is The Greatest Show on Earth. Greatest Show on Earth. Every time I think of this, we were here, you would not believe the Discord was just Lying in, everyone just was saying the same thing over and over and over. And it took us by storm. This moment in time took us by storm. I kid you not. Every time I get to this part, I lose it. And I don't know about being vulnerable like this. But the world needs more of it. And uh, I'm going to tell you, I've never witnessed anything like it before. And then it went right into Ad Astra, and um, it was just so great to see them sit down together. After this, I remember popping over to the Discord and, and, and seeing all the, uh, the pictures coming in of, of hearts and, and the earth spinning and everything in that moment. And what I'm saying is, we became that moment and if that's what the world needs we need it and it may not be just music okay it's not just music 
it is the moment that we need to um, realize and come together just how precious life can be, how much we need to prepare ourselves for life eternal, and knowing um, what we do here makes a difference. Okay? That's what it is. And just seeing that moment and the world, the way everything is right now, how it was just the barriers were broken down. We had no barriers. It was the purity of that moment and and even if you don't want to say it's because of song or music, it, it doesn't matter. It's even though this was the catalyst here in this particular situation, but it it is something we need to do more of. It does make a difference. All right. Well, this was my commentary for um, today. Um, my end of stream it should be done about right now anyway i might have a few more minutes left on it i did get through all of it i wanted to record this um because uh, it's important to do these kind of things to bring out um, what an impact music can have the spirit of song can have in our world and in our lives and i guess i'll just leave it at that thank you nightwish thank you Thomas, for your brilliant mind um, and all those that come together to make it happen to be part of that and to bring something like this to everyone um you know what more can i say you know we are the pulse and we will we will keep nightwish mm -hmm.